Satu Dave. Another Sunday. Thank you all for checking in. Coming to the BS session. Hanging out with Miss Socks and Big Dubs. It's hot outside, stay in there chilling. Miss Socks, she don't like the AC, but she's making an exception today, I guess. <clears throat> Alright, so this week was a lot of uh trying to prep everything or get everything ready for heat treat. So all that stuff has been sent over. I did record a little bit of video video basically of right before I sent it off. I got that Sharif Clap knife kind of sort of in a position where it's functional. Um, a lot of stakes were made. I can blame it on the heat. I can blame it on not thoroughly thinking out. But I, I made a lot of stupid mistakes, especially in the detent part of it. Stop pin and that sort of thing. Like, not the detent, the stop pin part. It's just dumb on my part. I made a lot of, I kept making mistakes. Like, once I started stumbling, I should have just stopped, thought about it, and regrouped. But I didn't. But let me stop it right here, show you that little insert of that video so you can kind of sort of see what it came out like. I don't know how long it's going to take to do the heat treat and that sort of thing. So, um, TMAC, which is kind of sort of a play on what his actual name is, um, is hooking me up with heat treat. So, I don't know if there's going to be a cost involved or not. He hasn't said anything as much, but if you've not watched the channel a long time, like, um, he's one of the first persons that jumped on my scales when I did the scales. Um, We've done deals in the past. Like, I've just known T-Mac for a long time. So, it's so freaking cool that part of the community, like, back before I even started doing this, is helping me finish this project. And I, I, it's, it's, I don't know how to put it in words, but uh, I'm very thankful for that situation. So, that, that's definitely cool as hell. So, let me stop here, show you the heat treat work, come back. All right, so I'm about to send some stuff out to heat treat, but I figured I'd just do a quick little update video. So the, the collaboration with Sharif is for this, for right now, it's gonna be done. Um, let's see if I can get the detent to show you. So we got it drilled for detent. Uh, the lock bar is not locking up because I have to leave meat on it for the, uh, <clears throat> to fit the lock after heat treat, but mistakes were made. So there's two holes in this back side. So yeah, it's one of those, there's, so many little holes everywhere that I just didn't plan it right. So yeah, mistakes were made. Proposal grind, but I think Sharif sure started taught me how to doing this and doing something a little bit different. Um, but the overall, like sitting in the detent and you know being happy with how the detent is right now, because right now it's pre heat treat. I don't want to keep doing it because the ceramic ball will tear up because it's much harder than the soft metal is, soft steel, soft steel. So I don't want to round that corner off. So I'm gonna leave it kind of as is right now. Um, I'll figure out a way to, I'll probably plug these holes, do something with them. I might contour the whole thing. I don't know. I'm just gonna deal with it because I've been dealing with it so much, pretty much nonstop since I started this thing that I'm pretty much gonna deal with it when it comes back from heat treat. But I think I take that one apart. Uh, this one's also gonna go to heat treat. That was that Skype reblade. And this was going to be a project between me, Billy, and Shane. But I think Shane and Billy are both busy. So I'll probably just finish this one and call it done and not even worry about it. But Steve's already claimed this one. So when this one gets back, I'm going to actually poke a few holes in it real quick before it goes to heat treat. But that's a quick update on those three. So, you know, I'm not knowing how long it's going to take and stuff. I, I mentioned a couple weeks ago that I was going to open up stuff for regrinds. Um, just to briefly go over the couple that I did this week, basically. Uh, so Denise's knife, this was the bomber edition of the, I don't know what this is called, the uh, Kingdom Armory. I'm not sure what the actual model is called. This is like a mid techie. Um, remember last week I left it where I wasn't quite happy with the detent. So in order to drill hardened steel, you need something harder than the steel, right? So if you try to drill it with like a high speed steel or a cobalt drill or something, it's just not gonna work. So you have to have carbide. And but the carbide I actually chose was like a 65 HRC carbide in order to drill into this blade to make it work but now watch how much better this detent is now like this is from just opening the hole up from last week you see how much better it was it's, it's kind of hard to show you in video but in feel of the pocket I mean in the hand now this is exactly exactly how I'd want this knife tuned if it was mine so hopefully Denise will like this she's already seen the video of it I will send it back to her tomorrow or Tuesday um, same with this one so this one kind of sort of as the same ballpark. I needed to order tools for it. The tools are supposed to be here yesterday. They didn't show up. So Monday, USPS, a little slow right now. Arizona, we get monsoon season. So like 
if you've never experienced it, like, you know, obviously Arizona doesn't get a lot of rain. So when it does rain, a lot of stuff floods, like they don't have good, you know, water evacuation. So it pools up in areas. Like I got a big spot right in front of the shed that are in front of the shop. That's like, it just makes a big lake. So <clears throat> anywho, uh, it always delays stuff with USPS shipping and that sort of thing. Flood that it just happens. Um, so this Scorpion six, which I'm not even sure what the model number is or model name is on this one. Um, she asked for studs, the detent rework, and then possibly taking off all the rounded edges. So I think I showed a picture of this before. I'm gonna try to get it as close as I can, but if you see the edges of it, they're, they're it's like similar to what I did to the 229s. It just kind of round. I don't want to take away the style of this knife. So I kind of sort of go around this direction and then also around this direction, if that makes sense. And just trying to smooth it out. Like if you're, you know, into the concealed carry pew pews, it, you know, CC, that's that's what they usually, usually call it, CC. So I just basically went through and did this. I, I try to keep as much of the original design in it as I could. Uh, I did thumb studs and I did them so close. I got, it was pucker factor the first time I did this. It doesn't hit, but look how close that stud came to hit. Yeah, man, I got it super close. But I wanted to tuck in there nice, nice and tight. And obviously, if you can't tell, uh, all three of these have been reground. So I basically just mimicked what he did here and here and then put a big hollow here. It, before it was kind of like faceted. Um, but overall, pretty happy with this knife. And honestly, man, I wouldn't mind owning something similar to this. Um, it's actually a pretty cool knife. Pocket clip placement kind of sucks. And I thought about asking her to move, if you wanted me to move the pocket clip down because I know she didn't like it either, but there's another hole here. So that you'd have to do something to fill that hole too. So it's kind of more of those, it, it can be done, but you're gonna have to make, it's gonna look unfinished or not complete. So I kind of left it, I wanted it to still look like it could have been a Scorpion 6 knife like this. Um, after I did all the rounding work, I just stonewash it again. So hopefully that stonewash is coming out. It took a little of this bronzing out from where it's not lasered and kind of looks just plain stonewash now uh, in person. Cause you can't really tell the difference between this radius and like what's in between that laser work that kind of sort of makes it look funky. Uh, but the laser work still got that nice bronzy kind of look to it. So I think it, this one turned out pretty nice. Um, I would have liked to make the detent a little stronger. Um, basically I came up with the same problem that I did on that um, Sharif model uh, collab that I did is the detent hole is so close to that track to the stop pin internally and the detent hole is so close to it if I drill it oversized if I just use a drill it's gonna break through usually when you break through on something the drill walks and it makes it look and basically align the hole differently that whole alignment for this has to be perfect so I did order tooling to do it now whether I will or won't it just kind of depends on if the tooling shows up before I get ready to ship it it's not bad as is it's not a great flipper but for the, the thumb and for the finger flick, it's, and as I messed it up left-handed, uh, I like it a lot. I think it works really well. The studs are kind of in, so they don't really bother you at all. So you, you real, just good placement to me. Like I tried to make it as, as easy as I could to, to work and to be out of the way as far as the, the cut goes and that sort of thing. Cause I want this knife to still be functioning hundred percent. So you can see there's no way the studs are in the way of that cutting path. Uh, so that one came through and Nah, we'll call it like 90% done. I might do the other 10% and I might send it to her and let her make the call whether she wants me to work on that D10 or not. I, it just depends. Uh, Denise is good people. She always sends stuff back and forth. So I'm not sweating it. Uh, this one is going to be an interesting one. This one came from Paul. Now I believe this is a MBK uh, Monterey Bay Knives. Yeah, okay. Uh, I had to sign it out myself because I didn't really remember. Um, and I have no idea what model this is. You guys probably know before I would. This is a liner lock inset i think yeah inset liner lock that he wants converted to bearings i think that's going to be the first and only one that i'm ever going to do liner lock so moving forward yes i can make stuff on the bearings now i do have the equipment to be able to do it um it's still not going to be 100 percent yet till i get some other stuff figured out but you can see how thin that blade stock is and being a liner lock too so obviously the liner lock side cannot be changed uh, and I have to cut pockets in to the blade and to the titanium. And I think I showed you last week of my explanation of kind of why I use the thinner balls, the smaller diameter ball in order to remove less material. So you're not, you know, this is knife is on washers currently. Um, so I basically have to cut it another 20 thou. So I have to go in the blade 20 thou. And I, it, you know, ideally it would be the same on both sides 
but because the blade's so thin, I'm basically gonna have to cut a pocket on the top, on the liner lock side, 20 thou into the blade, and then I'm gonna have to go into the titanium on this show side and cut another 20 thou pocket. So uh, two different complete setups to try to make that work. We'll see, it may or may not work. Uh, this one also has a little bit of blade or a detent lash right now. When he first told me, I was like, I don't even feel it. But then after a minute, I was like, yeah, okay, I got you. Um, it's one of those things to me, like if you just use the stud, like you just pick it up and use it, I can't feel the lash at all. But when you play with it, like if you're trying to find a problem with it, you can definitely feel it in there. Uh, I guess this was sent back to Monterey Bay knives and it wasn't, you know, what he expected out of the, the knife, which, you know, I, I, I get that. You buy something, you want it to be right or whatever else. Uh, <clears throat> but it seems good to me, but uh, we're all slightly different. Uh, I did do the hollow ground on this one, so you can see it's already been ground. Um, so nice, the warranty void, I guess at this point, I would I would assume. Nice thin hollow ground. And I've done other ones for Paul, so I think he knows what he's getting into as far as that goes. But um, it's fun to kind of get back in and start to do regrinds again. Uh, I kind of wish there were more knives that I was into, but you know, beggars can't be choosers, I suppose. Um, but for anybody interested in regrinds, it's 40 bucks a regrind. Then that's going to be in shipping back and everything else. So I'm not doing it like I was before. I'm not even going to entertain the fact that someone may or may not tip me. Just 40 bucks for a regrind. I'll take care of it. I'll regrind it. I'll send it back to you. 40 bucks. So this one also going to need a stop pin and the bearing conversion, which is going to obviously be more money. But uh, it's kind of throwing it out there. So if somebody else wants something, that's fine. Like obviously, it's not really what I want to be regrinding, but at the same time, like, it still gets me on the wheel and I enjoy the grind work. The grind work's fun, especially because I found that like I can't start a project late at night. Uh, I get home from work, say six, maybe seven before I get settled, get everything, you know, dinner, dogs fed, walked, everything like that. It might be seven o'clock. I can't really come out here and start a machining job or something that's gonna involve me trying to think through it. When I get to grinding, grinding is almost like fun. Like I can come out here almost at eight o'clock, nine o'clock at night grind a knife and you know do a good job on it and just have fun so that's kind of sort of what i'm in in the ac as well versus the machine shop which is you know full-on heat <clears throat> um so I, that's kind of where i'm feeling the time right now until that that collab knife comes back that's gonna be my focus again i want to get that one done under my belt i want to get that one as good as i can get it and then probably sent to sharif for him to check out I'm sure he'll have a lot of critiques and you should try this. But when I talked to him earlier, he's like, man, I didn't have any expectations. I just, you know, wanted to have a fun project. So he's got the right attitude. I love working with Sharif so far. Um, been a solid dude. And I value his feedback. You know, uh, a lot of people get into the whole hating on other people for, you know, getting stuff produced overseas, whatever else. But like, if you're just a designer, engineer, such as Sharif, I don't know if he has machine experience or not. I don't think he does. But like, even if he did, but you don't have the means of making it, you, you got to go somewhere. And yeah, there is American places you can get stuff done, but you've got to have that next level of knowledge, I think. Um, so, I, you know, I appreciate people like that working with me. Uh, um, hope to do more of that because I don't really consider myself a designer as more of a, like, I, I don't know. Like, I, I, I like, <laughs> well, when me and my wife work, like, I always called her the, the brains and me the executioner. That's kind of sort of how she's, I want this and then let me do my thing and then you can critique it and we can kind of move forward from there. And that's kind of like how it works. Um, just fun for me. So I think I have a, I guess I'm kind of at a crossroads. I'm sorry if I'm just rambling, but you know, not really at the same time. Uh, I'm kind of at a crossroads because I could get this CNC fixed, probably produce better machining quicker with the CNC. The problem with doing this is, I'm just gonna flick a knife while y'all talking. While I'm talking, if you don't mind. Um, the problem with doing this is, I was a CNC machinist pretty much most of my career. So, you know, welding and fabrication and stuff as well. But like, majority of machining I did, I did some manual. But for the most part, it's mostly CNC stuff. Um, even this like press break and sheet metal fabrication, it's all been like CNC. It's not done manual. So it's a whole different kind of ball game. Uh, jumping over to manual and I'm just finding that I kind of like the challenge of manual and I kind of like it better because I did the CNC thing for so long that I'm kind of just burnt out on CNC and I really don't want to have a computer that I got to program to put it in my seat where I can just go in there and do that it takes way longer it's way more involved way more mistakes can be made easier but I like that challenge of it so I'm at the crossroads now do I fix my CNC mill 
Uh, my lathe is the same kind of way. Like I, I honestly don't run my lathe like a CNC lathe. I run it just on the DRO. So I'm pretty much using it like a manual anyhow. So I might as well just like, I don't know, get a manual lathe and be done with it. Um, so I'm kind of sort of thinking about the whole thing. Like, should I get these CNC's fixed? And to be able to do something like the model that Sharif sent, like I, I could have made it a way more closer interpretation with the CNC and programming and that sort of thing. Or should I abandon the CNC and just go all manual and just say the hell with it and go, I know I'm going custom anyhow. Like that's my personal like avenue moving forward is gonna be custom. Even if I just build it for myself, I don't care. Like I'm just gonna be like, I'm, I'm all in the customs and there's only one way to do it to get better and that's to do it more, right? So like you can in head do a bunch of things and I know I could probably make a better knife with the CNC currently right now but that's just because I haven't done enough with the manual. So, crossroads for me. It's contemplation, I guess. Um, I just like everything else. Like, will these machines sell enough to get me what I want manually? So, like, uh, a while back, and I think I've mentioned it before, but if I haven't, my buddy Aaron, he lives out in Jersey, and Aaron was actually going to give me some stuff, some equipment that was at his dad's house. And we just checked in on a ship, and it would, you know, I'm looking around 10 grand just to get a ship from New Jersey to Arizona. So like, is, is it really worth paying 10 grand to get something moved from there to here? Probably excellent equipment, but could I not just get that here? And that's a lot of money, 10 grand, right? I don't can't remember exactly what it was, but it was, it was a lot, it was a substantial amount of money just to get it moved. Um, maybe it was five grand, I can't remember, but it was a lot of money to get equipment moved that I could get right here, basically for the same amount of money. So I don't know. Uh, Sorry to keep rambling here. I just, just thought the current thought process, I guess. Speaking of which, like, you know, nothing's really selling right now. So like, um, my bro Jose's uh, paying for wedding stuff. So he's selling a bunch of bangers. Like, uh, he's, he's, I mean, I hate to see him selling the stuff and the stuff he's selling because like, my thoughts is like, like this particular knife, like this is number one of the Atreyu. Um, it is the thicker blade one. Uh, I had the, I, I had, offered this to one person this one or the other one and uh, he ended up choosing the other one which is good for me uh i, I kind of would rather have kept this one anyhow but i didn't really care at the same time their advantages disadvantages both of them but this is not a knife that's easily replaced like you can't just go get another one of these you can order one from dan get something similar to this but even with that you don't know what it's going to be like all dan's actions are slightly different the detents are slightly different yeah you can tweak them but coming from him they're going to be slightly different it's just part of it so when you're selling knives that are like hard to find, like Brother Jose is selling like the Crusader, uh, it, you know, a, a bunch of stuff that like it's hard to find. Uh, it's not really replaceable, you know. I mean, you can find something in the future that may be, but like my well, brother Steve's Scotty thing is selling some knives too. Most of what he's selling is like you can kind of go get it, but he's selling a couple of customs too that like that, you know you're not going to replace that. So if you you know six months down the road, like man, I regret buying that. Good luck finding one like but even in that even at that it's a buyer's market right now nobody's buying like i've seen so many good knives uh i passed up a deal on a, another rogue of its was a bowie and it's it was the dude started at like i think thousand or 950 and ended up selling for 700 bucks brand new brand new knife like they're over a thousand bucks new i think he paid 11 or 1200 dollars for it new so it basically took a $500 loss just from getting it, having it for a minute and selling it. Like that sucks, man. That's horrible. Um, I've seen another, uh, or Aaron actually sent me a picture of another uh, Dalibor. Great looking knife. I think it went from like 800 bucks, which is, you know, for Dalibor, that's dirt cheap. Most of his are thousands. Um, like 2000 and up for most of his stuff. It's an older one, obviously, but still like, man, just no resale market at all right now. Like it's, it's kind of the buyer's market right now. So. I don't know, just kind of weird times. And I guess, you know, having been in the knife game for a long time, you know, you see trends come and go. Uh, it seems to me like from a machinist point of view, and if you've ever done any kind of government contract work or work that relied on a certain political party to have jobs. So like, <clears throat> I try to keep out of politics as much as possible because it's not really what I want to do here. Um, but like, if you're doing defense contract work, which a lot of the machinist stuff that I did, have been doing here in Tucson is based on, um, you know, defense contracts, not necessarily with our company, but with another company that might feed us work kind of thing. Uh, basically every four years, you either have work or don't have work. 
depending on what party's involved. Uh, and that's just how it is. Like, so kind of a weird way of earning a living in that time, you know, like you gotta be careful. Uh, not necessarily what you say, but you know, like it, you gotta have your finances in order because it may be like working overtime and then all of a sudden, no work, maybe even cutting hours, laying off people, and it just happens. Like that, it's probably why I'm not working at the machine shop right now. Is basically the work dried up so much that you know they were, they didn't really have any need for any part time people when I was working part time. You know, I still get called occasionally to help on certain things, but for the by far and large, I don't work at the machine shop anymore. Uh, I'm I am rambling so much. I'm sure this is like a 20 minute video or close to a 20 minute video at this point. Um, I'm just like I'm I'm over the over the push of getting a couple things to heat treat. Uh, I'm kind of sort of kicked back and trying to relax a little more. Um, hopefully enjoying some more regrinds. Um, trying to be patient with my money and not spend my money on stuff I don't need to spend it on, uh, which has been really tempting. Um, Brother Jose offered me a, a hell a hell of a knife um, to buy, and I probably will end up buying it from him. But I I just can't right now. I got to get some equipment in, or got to get my stuff fixed. I got to kind of sort of figure out where I want to be in the future, how I want to work it and that sort of thing. So lots of moving pieces for me personally. Um, so I'm kind of take myself out of the buyer's market right now. So I'm trying to not pay attention to what's being <laughs> sold because I know I'll be tempted. Uh, I, I'm just going to leave it there, man. Like this has definitely been a ramble, ramble, ramble. And I got nothing like, you know, normally I got something come. Well, I do have a couple things coming, but you know, like, not really, really, like not the shipping that hadn't been created. I'm just getting them made. Um, and I've already mentioned who they're from um, in the past. So when they get here, they get here. But like, there's nothing like super exciting as far as like, I got this new or this to show you or that sort of thing. So moving into like mod work, I guess right now, I'll probably go through like, this is a prime example. So like this particular uh, Atreyu, remember I was saying that Dan's action is slightly different. It's great for the flipper, but I can't thumb flick it at all like i can't finger flick it at all like the detent just won't let me do it so i'll probably do some detent work to this just to make it open for that i'm either going to try to refine it for the flipper or make it more of finger flicking and i haven't really decided which one yet but i'm leaning towards the finger flicking because that just seems to be the what i do more uh personally like this little knife actually th this one right here in particular this little thing surprised me because it's small but it's you know still even my big mitts can get on it so i, I like it i like the style of this one a lot uh and the action now sweet all right sorry that this is a <laughs> less than uh educational or uh, i don't know whatever else that might be like it's just a it's just a ramble from the shop chilling with wets is he still down there let's see is he still down there yeah oh he about fell asleep but there he is he's over there he's sleeping we're gonna call it right there since my thumb's blocking half the screen anyhow <laughs> y'all be cool see you later bye